Hi, this is Kathy Quinn with Floriani. Floriani is a division of RNK Distributing, and I want to welcome you to this week's Project of the Week. Well, if you tuned in last week, you know we talked about our wonderful distortion tool up here on the top toolbar at the far right end. And we looked through what the distortion tool would do. And we looked at that because I'd had questions since uh, apparently another software brand is coming out with the same type of tool if we could do that. Well, we've had this tool for quite some time, and I realized then how much creatures of habit we are. We get stuck in lettering and adding lettering to a design. We might rotate a design. We might change some colors. We might resize. But a lot of times we don't realize all the features and factors we have in an amazing piece of software that we just don't use. A lot of times it's because we don't know what the icon is and we're a little scared of it. Um, and I know that I have gone over these uh, features, especially as they come in. I go over it, but usually when we introduce a bunch of features, we introduce a whole lot. So I'll go through the features and you may grab onto one and say, oh, that is so neat. And you kind of forget about the others. And I felt like that was the truth with the distortion tool. Well, DJ, um, of course, he sees all the lessons that as they go out. He grabbed the lesson and he did some pretty amazing things. He took and used the distortion tool to create a sphere, which looks really good. But then he went a step further and he used one of our color blend tools down here. Now I want you to notice, if just to reiterate, because a lot of us, like I say, get stuck using the same two or three things all the time. If you come along the very bottom, the first three icons pertain to a run stitch. The next set of icons pertain to satin stitches. The next set of icons, which is hearts, are all about fills. Now that's where DJ played with this. Now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to select everything on screen. I'm going to right mouse click and copy and I'm going to open a new piece of paper and I'm going to paste because I don't want to mess up DJ's real pretty design. So I'm going to come in here and we're going to look at these. Now I had the 3D view on in the other one so you see how cool they look in 3D. I'm going to take that off for a moment. Now I want to go a little further. Now DJ used the um, color blend for the fill right here. So you can see he took this tool and he did some a lot of fun with it. You can see he picked out a specific amount of colors, he added them in, and he played with the color blend. That is a lot of fun. So let's look at this color blend tool. If I come in here, I've got choices, linear decreasing, linear increasing. I've got, uh, let me get this, you've got convex, concave. You can play a whole lot with this tool. You can change the colors that you want in here. Let me pull this down so you can see. You can add colors. You can say how much spacing you want between. So you can have a whole lot of fun with this tool. And a lot of times we don't play with it because we're intimidated. Get you a shape up and start playing. The worst that can happen is you're going to start over or remember undo is your friend. So if I said undo before I played with that tool, it's going to go right back to where DJ had it. Now something I thought would be a lot of fun, let's select this. Another tool that doesn't get enough press is our color play. Let's take this and click on color play. So I'm going to play with this. Now notice it brings up all my design and it's using three colors. DJ has blended three colors. Now let's come up here and say, well, what if I just want to play with color play and kind of let this work with it? Let's go to 3D view and let's start playing with the color play where it's going to switch them for us. Now, the first thing that's important is affected colors. Notice everyone has a check mark by it. So I'm telling it it's okay to change all three colors. But let's say we had a flower on a stem. Now we wanted to change the flower, but we wanted the stem to remain the same green or brown or whatever. You would deselect that color and color blend would not affect it. But in this case, I want to play with them all. So I'm going to say, let's lighten these colors. 
let's play in here and let's lighten them up. Let's darken these colors. Let's come in here and start darkening them up. Ooh, I like that. Now that's really pretty to me. Now I can also, ooh, that just I really like this dark. It looks really neat to me. I can also randomize because a lot of times you and I, there's colors uh, that would come up here that we might never think of to play with. So if you go through random, you can have a lot of fun in there. Now, if you were clicking too fast, you could say, ooh, I like that. I could go back a step. I could go a step forward. I can also come in here and say, reset and let me start over. I liked my original colors. I got a little crazy. You can also go to theme, which I really like. Now, if I go to theme, it's going to bring up um, color themes that we can pick from. Okay, so you can see in here, we've got color waves. So if I needed something in here, um, I have a daughter-in-law that just loves purples. So I could come in here to the purples and say, okay, I want to play within that. Now I could lighten it. I could darken it. I could play within that color wave. I could go back to theme. I could go down and say, well, you know what? I really like pastels. I really don't, but we're going to pretend for this exercise I do. So I could come in and start playing with some of these pastel colors where it wouldn't be so bold. But you can get the idea that you've got so much to play with in color play. So you could create something cool, you could color blend it, and then you could come in and look at the different color waves. I mean, if even if you were doing a quilt you could do the same design and do color waves and color play on all the different blocks. How fun would that be? You could use different shapes. You need to get in here and play with this to enjoy, to see all the things you do. Let's reset this. Now the next thing I want to talk about is we've reset this. So we're still back in here where DJ worked with us, DJ created for us. You see, DJ has a lot of knowledge. DJ does most of the changing and the creation of our software. And so when he goes in and plays, he took my distortion lesson, and of course he brought it to another level by adding color, uh, the color blend in. I wouldn't have thought of that. But now DJ has given us something else to play with. So then color blend, well, I can add on that, and I could come up to color play and play with that. Now, I could also come in here and let's say I, I like this design. I mean, we're using the spheres, but we could be any design. And I like it, and I want to, let's say I want to do a pillow. I want to put this on a de uh, decor pillow. Now, obviously, we're not going to put two spheres in the middle of a pillow, but you get my, you'll get the idea. So now what I want to do is I want to make these so they'll fit the biggest tube I have for that pillow. So I'm going to come up here, I'm down, excuse me, over onto the left hand side. I've got to pick a hoop. I need to select a hoop because whatever hoop I'm going to select, I'm now going to tell it to fit to hoop. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to stay with my, oh, I've got my multi needle selected. That's good. Um, if I deselect this, it's just going to give me the frames for my brother, baby lock, you know, my flatbed machine. If I click multi-needle, it's going to add in all the extra hoops that my tin needle has. So I'm going to go for the tin needle because I happen to know my biggest frame is in that one. So if I come in here and I'm going to use, let's see if they've got it even listed here. This is 50, 60, that would be, yeah, this is it. This is my 14 by 14 inch hoop. So I've got this selected and let me go here. Let's go, wait, let me, let me cancel this a moment. I put this in millimeters earlier for something. Let's go to inches. I'm much more comfortable in inches. Now hoops, you're gonna always be more precise in millimeters, there's no question. So I'm gonna again go to my 360 by 360, but notice it's gonna tell me my overall hoop space in inches here if I have it in inches. A minute ago it was in millimeters and I was still just as clueless. Now I've got in my mind I understand 13 and 7 eighths a little 
easier. So this is my 14 by 14 inch hoop that I'm going to use on my multi-needle machine. So now I'm going to say OK. Now there's that hoop, but this is some cool design that I have distorted. I've, I've used color play. I've used color blend. I've just had a ball with this. But now I want to make it big enough to go on my pillow, and I want to make it as big as possible. So by having this hoop up here, I can now come up right next to my distortion tool in the upper right hand corner. I'm going to say fit to hoop. So what it's going to do is it's going to redigitize and resize these till they fit my hoop as big as I can possibly have them on there to play with that in color play to work with it. Something else that you're missing out on, and I'm going to select one of these. Something else that we have put in here. Now this is a new feature and I've shown it to you, but a lot of times we we're not used to it. So I want to show you something else you could do to play. DJ's put in all these beautiful variegated and twists. This was an enormous, enormous amount of work. And people don't want to see, they want to see exactly how that variegated is going to stitch. Is it going to stripe? Is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? I'm going to pick this and I'm going to look at what this would look like in the variegated. So now I already know what a variegated would look like in here. Now let's do undo as my friend. Let's take that variegated off and let's take our hoop, our size back down to where they are, where they, they're supposed to be. Okay, let me turn this hoop off because I don't want to look at it. Now I'm going to select this and let's fit this to screen so we have a better seat. So now I could take these same fun things I've been playing with. Let's look at some variegated threads. So let's pick a variegated thread here and see what this is going to look like in the variegated threads. Now this is really accurate because DJ actually went through and measured all the different spacings in our variegateds because they are not a specific spacing. They don't have like every inch they change the color. That's how you get stripes. But if you have it like this, then you can tell what it's going to look like. Now I am going to make this just a little bigger. And the reason is, you notice how the variegate, variegation changes. If I make it really small, the smaller the area, the closer to striping you're going to get. As you can see, since it changes so at certain intervals, you can see here was a long interval, here was a fairly short interval. You get the idea on that. So there's the variegated threads you don't want to forget. Another thread you don't want to forget is our twists. Now those are the ones that just show two colors. We've taken a rayon and a poly and we've twisted it together. This is also a really, whoops, a really cool look. Let me get that twist in there. There we go. All right. That's a twist. So look at all these different options you have. Play with these things in your software so you get used to seeing them, you get used to them being there, and then when you have a need for it, you'll remember, oh, I've got that cool color blend. I've got that great color play. Oh, let's distort this and give this a really neat look. I want you to play with icons that you're not using all the time because the problem is you've paid for an amazing software package. Don't treat it like it's a resizing package. This software will do anything you want. It's an amazing package and I want you to really start looking at the different tools that you may not be using just because it's something you're not familiar with. You come up here and you see this weird thing and you go, oh, what's distortion? Well, we're looking at that. Let's fit to hoop. Let's play with our, our fills, our gradient fills, our wave fills, our um, gradient waves. I mean, you've got all kinds of options down here. And if you just take a shape and start playing with it, you're gonna, it's amazing at what little things you can learn to do. Something else that I'm finding people are not really utilizing. I'm going to come up to file and I'm going to say save to sell. Whoops. Pull it to save. I want to go file and I'm going to say save to sell. Now I've shown this because this is one of our newest 
our one of our new release features, but it's a cool feature. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say I'm going to put this on I'm going to put this on denim. So I'm going to come in here and say denim and I digitize this. And I'm going to tell it go ahead and change anything you need to change. So it will stitch the best on denim. Now when I go to next, it's going to tell me exactly how I need to stabilize for denim. Now what is so nice about this is if you don't understand how to use Floriani Stitch and Wash Fusible, maybe you've never used it, maybe you're brand new to our stabilizers, you can watch the video and Debbie will show you exactly how to use it. So you'll be using the stabilizer you have purchased properly and not wasting it. Then she'll show you, then there's how to hoop, and then we want you to use heat and gone topping. This is how you use the topping. Now you can watch the video, you can just get product info that'll give you a you know, iron this on at, you know, 260 degrees, dampen it, tear it away. They will just kind of give you a, a written um, information. It's the same information that's on that sheet that's rolled up inside your rolls of stabilizer. Now, what I love about this, okay, it's also got some special instructions. So I'm going to finish this. So I've told it, I want you to save it for denim, blah, blah, blah. It's done everything. Now notice in my design notes, it's telling me step one is to fuse, step two, how to hoop. It's giving me the same steps, even better than that. Let's go to File, Print Preview. Now critical to this, I'm going to go to Settings real quick. I'm going to go here to Settings. And when I go to Settings, if I, I need to have design notes checked if I want it to add what was in that notes box to come in here to print. So I've got that. I've got print actual size. I didn't say print color analysis, but I could. I don't want it to print in one page because I'm probably going to use this for a, um, I'm having this click problems here. Um, I might want it to print the color analysis. I don't want to print in one page because if I'm using this as a template, I need it to be actual size. I can told it to put crosshairs, I told it to put my design notes, I told it to put my Floriani cat uh, so that I can, if I'm stitching on a brother or a baby lock, I can use the positioning. And I'm going to say OK to this. I'm just having a time. I'm going to turn off my backup. It's backing up. Um, skip the backup. It's slowing my computer down so slow I can't use it. And it's still giving me trouble. Okay. Well, let's see with this. Okay, when all else fails, we try to close it. Let's see if we can close this down where it's frozen up on me. There we go. I got something to work. Thank goodness. Okay, there we go. Perfect. All right. Got it unstuck. All right, so you can see down here it's printed my wonderful notes. Step one, I'm going to fuse stitch and wash fusible. It's going to remind me exactly what to do. So having these uh, print preview is really nice because then you are able to go ahead and print those notes out at the same time, especially if you're new to a certain stabilizer or something we're using. So I hope you enjoyed tonight's lesson. It was kind of a takeoff on DJ giving us something really cool to look at. And I just wanted to take it a little farther and say, you know, there's a lot of things that you could do that we don't realize, we don't think about. So think about these tools. Play with some of these tools over here that you've been avoiding because you're not so sure. If nothing else, go in here, pull up a nice shape, and start going through all the fills. See what you can do, you can't do. Try your gradient fills. Try your color wave fills. Have a good time because you're going to find the more you play, the more confident you are, and the more individualized your designs are going to be. Even if you're using a design someone else did, you're going to be able to change it and modify it to reflect your creativity. 
So I hope you enjoyed tonight's lesson. I look forward to seeing you again next week. Have a great week.